Hi! In today's video I want to present the Farlinx OK6254 board to you. I will use this board in a new series of videos in which I will show you how to get GNU Linux up and running on a real embedded hardware. So I got this board from the company Farlinx on the embedded world and I will use it as a platform for my following videos. In today's video I will present this board to you and its interfaces and we will even boot it. And I also will tell you a little bit about the company for links. So let's start. Here is the web page of for links. So it's forlinks.net and you can see the company is based in China and it builds system on modules with various chips from Rockchip, Allwinner, NXP or Texas Instruments. Then it builds single board computers with the system on the modules on it and embedded computers too. If you want to buy a board, you can go on alibaba.com and here you can see this is the page of the OK6254 board I have here, so here you could order it. I'll put a link of Alibaba and four links in the description. Ok, so now let's take a look at the board. This document here is the hardware manual of the board, which is provided by 4Links and you can see it's 73 pages long, so quite a bit, quite detailed. And let me go down a little bit to where we can find information or what's on the board. So here it is. So here is the board. I will use. Ok, let's start at the system on the module here. So the heart of this module is uh, ASIC from Texas Instruments and this is the AM6254 chip. It's a quite new chip, it was released last year I think and it features four Cortex-A53 cores from ARM for running a Linux operating system and one Cortex-M core for real-time operations and device management. Then you have DDR4 RAM on the board and you can choose between a 1GB and a 2GB version. You also get a flash storage, so here we have a 8GB EMMC storage. Ok, and this is only the system on the module which is plugged on this carrier board, so let's take a look what is on this carrier board. So let's start down here. We have two gigabit Ethernet ports. We have dip switches for adjusting the boot mode. And if all dip switches are off, like seen in here, um, the device will boot from the eMMC memory. But we have other boot options. For example, I will use the SD card boot and we can adjust the boot mode here. Up here we have a small table showing us the available boot modes and the dip switch settings for them. Here we have a LCD display connector, a chip for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, up here we have a reset button, SD card slot, SIM card slot, audio check, barrel check for power supply, this uses a 12 volt power supply, we have a power switch, um, three I.O. headers here, some user keys and user LEDs we can use. If we want to debug the chip we can use this JTAG connector up here. Here in this picture it isn't soldered, but on my board the pin header is already soldered down. Here we have two CAN interfaces and one RS485 interfaces available. We have um, LVDS for connecting a display and we have a real-time clock available here. Then here we have a USB to UART bridge to access the serial console of um, the Linux kernel, so um, the over the serial port debug informations are available and you can even access a TTY over the serial port here. We have USB on the go, free USB 2.0 host connectors, I think this here could be a USB hub maybe. And here a really cool thing is we have an M.2 slot here over which we can connect PCI Express cards in M.2 um, form factors. And as an example, here is a 4G or 5G modem plugged into it. Ok, so these are quite a lot of peripherals and a lot of useful peripherals to get started using the system on a module. 
And now the next step, I want to boot the board and show you a little bit around. So, and together with, with the board, I got this really nice LCD display because it was on the exhibition um, when I power up the board from the eMMC memory. A demo video for for links will play. Yeah, so this is quite cool. And here we have the um, USB to UART bridge. So let me connect it. And now I should have a new serial connection on my device. Yes, so here I have two UARTs. This UART is used for accessing the TTY over serial. So let me open it up with screen. And the baud rate is 150,200. I have to give it my password. And here we go. So now let me power on the board. So here you can see U-Boot is starting and now it's booting from the embedded multimedia card. So here you can see the system D messages and boot messages. Now a program has started which flashes the LEDs here. And on the LCD display you should see the an image um, video for four links embedded. Here you go. <laughs> cool. And here you can see we have accessed a TTY and we can log on the board. So the username is root and we don't need to give it a password. And here we are. Let's take a look at the home folder. So when I got the board initially, the only file in here was for links the video file here and the rest are some things I have tested here on this board. So let's look at some more interesting stuff. First, let's take a look at the processor. So in proxy PU info, we get some information. And as I already told you, it's a four core processor. So we have four processor cores here. Okay, let's take a look at the memory with three, and I want to have it human readable. So we have one gigabyte of memory available, but you can also buy the system on a module with two gigabytes. And if we look at the devices, yeah, this is the AMC memory, and here we have 6.8 gigabytes complete size, and 4.6 gigabytes is still available, which is quite a lot. Even I think the image video is quite big too. Yeah, the image video is already 120 megabytes in size. Okay, and if we look at the used um, memory, we see about 400 megabytes are used. Okay, this seems a little bit much, but you have to know <laughs> a video is playing here. And if you take this into account, this is really okay, this memory usage. Okay, so let's see which um, network interfaces are available. So we have two Ethernet connections here. These are our two Ethernet, um, yeah, our two Ethernet interfaces. And we have a CAN interface available too, which is pretty cool. And some other connections here. Okay, let's see which drivers are loaded by looking at the device files. So if we can access GPIOs, I2C, and stuff like this. Okay, this looks good. So we have three GPIO chips available. We have five I2C interfaces available. And I think, yeah, we even have an SBI interface available. So this is quite cool here. Do we have some serial interfaces available too? Mm, doesn't look so, but never mind. And if I go into this class, remote processors. Um, here we have three remote processors listed and the first one here, this should be our M4 core. So if I cat the name here, yeah, the name is M4 FSS. So this is the M4 core and over this is of S we will later load a sample program to this. So I think this is a really cool board and a really good platform for getting started with um, programming embedded Linux. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've 
and show it to video and learn something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymycoffee.com slash for Linux. So that's it from me. Thanks for watching and goodbye.